Okay, people, this video is going to discuss vector masks. We've talked about layer masks in a previous video, one which um, is still rated on my channel as the highest viewed one, uh, which is the pyramids. Um, so if you haven't seen that, I'd strongly recommend you go and watch that video before coming to see this one. Um, and what we're going to do on this is we're going to continue onwards by discussing how vector masks work. Now what I'm going to intend to do through this particular video is discuss um, how I can make this little chappy here um, when I went to Disney back in 2006 appear like he's on a movie poster for um, a new Flash Gordon film because he looks that sort of 1950s rocket man sort of villain. Um, so I'm going to go from this utilizing other images such as um, the star field and the um, very cool sun, um, ultraviolet sun that I found and what we're going to end up with is this. Let's just turn the paths thing off just so you can see it a bit clearer. There we go so you can see the um, finished article. So um, how do we go around doing that? Well Let's go back to the composition. Incidentally, this file, as it stands at the moment, you can obtain from my website, which is pcteach.me. Um, you'll need to register, and on this particular article, you'll be able to download um, this PSD file so you can have a play around to your heart's content. So what we're going to do? Well, we need to look at vector masks. Vector masks um, allow you to, in effect, use a pair of scissors to cut through. We've used things like vector masks before, but you probably didn't know you were doing it such as the lasso tool this creates a sort of shape that you can use that in intents and purposes is a line um, which is actually created as a vector now what we're going to do is we're going to be a lot more precise because lasso tool is a pain it's continuous you have to drag and you have to keep it going um, the better way of working is to use paths now paths again has been in another video of mine um, but we're going to explore it in a little bit more detail here so how do we get started well what we do is we go to paths and create a new path and we'll just call it path one for the time being and to create a path you either use the set shapes here or alternatively you can use this pen tool now that's the way it's probably best to do it because this gives you a complete control of how you would cut things out so with the pen tool selected I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to choose a particular area here and by clicking once, twice, three times, four times, five times and six to finish the loop. As you can see I've now created a path which doesn't very clearly show it in the thumbnail but it's there. Let me just draw a really big box and you'll see there we go we've now got a path appearing on there so what you would do is using these clicking methods is you would then create the area that you wish to keep on your image so using clicks you can sometimes click very very close to create nice curves you can then put it all together so with that done what if you've made a mistake well on the pen tool you also have delete anchor points and add anchor points so if I delete anchor points first of all click on the um, vector that you want to change and then every single point you go to you can click you can then remove alternatively just do control Z or undo a lot um, if you wanted to remove um, subsequent lots and lots and lots of them um, but if it's for fine-tuning it's quite useful to use these particular tools so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat I'm going to take the vector mask from my original file which is here with it selected once edit copy and go to the one here and then do edit paste I've now got this path appearing here which is as you can see got all this information in and so with this particular path section created we can now create our vector mask so we go making sure layers is selected and then go to the layer section and making sure the correct layer is selected as well we can then go to the mask sections and then create a layer um, a vector mask as you'll see there's two options you have a pixel um, mask and you've also got a vector mask now just watch what happens if I go back to paths click away you'll see in a brief second once I go back to whoops once I go back to layers that the um, 
vector option has now greyed out. The reason being is because I need to make sure I've got a path selected for it to work. So as long as I've got the path selected and the layer selected, if I click on this button now, you'll see that I've now cut out the image. Superb. A lot better than using the magic wand tool that I showed in um, previous ones, the magic wand and the quick selection tool. Much better to do this way. So with that done, that's to starting point, great. However, one of the previous things I showed you on the videos was that you could do feathering and, and things like that. You can do feathering, but there was a lot more range of options that you could do in the previous video, such as setting up contrast, the radius. Um, there's all sorts of different options you can do. Now, these are all mixed, um, switched off at the moment because I need to get into Mask Edge. And the reason why it's missing is because it's currently a vector mask. What we do is we right click on the mask, as you can see next to the um, image here, and choose rasterize, which will then convert it to a pixel mask. Now what you'll see is, can you see how the image has changed to a silhouetted icon? And I've now got these three buttons available to me. So for example, if I click on invert, I do the opposite. I show the background rather than what I'm interested in. And then I also then have my mask edge option, which we saw before. So I'm not going to fiddle with it just yet because I want to get the other areas in into play. So if I turn on the star field now, there we go. We've got this quite wonderful image there. Um, and it does look reasonably three-dimensional at this point. And I'm also going to add the sun. But when I add the sun, I'll just switch the layer so it's above it. It's cut out. It doesn't look very nice. I'm going to hide Ming for a moment. And we're going to zoom in because I'm going to do another vector mask, this time around the sun. So again, turn the star field off for the time being. But rather than using the pen tool, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the eclipse tool. But before you do that, make sure you go to paths and create a new path. And I'll call this sun. And making sure that's selected, then use it. Otherwise, you will draw onto your image, which you don't want. So I'm just going to very, very loosely hold down the Shift key and drag. And then move, whoops, move the, um, and move it along. So we go to Edit, Free, uh, free Transform, and then we can move it around. So I want to make sure I get the actual prominence, which is coming from the, from the sun as well. So just make it a little bit bigger. That's fine. And then what we'll do is, again, making sure sun is selected and making sure that um, your layers of sun is selected, we create another vector mask. And there we go, we've cut it out. So we're starting to get there, but it still doesn't look perfect. Well, again, with the sun, I need to make it a pixel um, version. So I'm going to rasterize it. The reason I want to do that is so I can then go into my um, mask edge tool and start putting it together. So with them both selected, mask edge, uh, let's put the um, normal thing together um, and then we just fiddle around with the contract and expand tools until we get it the way we want it. Okay so I've chosen these particular settings so you may want to copy me if not doesn't matter I'm just going to OK and once that's done there we are we've now got if I zoom out I've got my sun on my star field and all I've got to do now is bring back Ming the Merciless and then some text I've already got on here. So Ming is back. And I probably finally, if I go back to Ming the Merciless, I will just move this chappy over a little bit and probably bring him down a touch. And there you have it. Finishing touches that you can do. I've done things like Gaussian blur across the whole thing just so it makes it look a little bit more finished. So I'm just going to hold down shift key, click on them all and convert to a smart object so it all becomes in effect one layer. And then with that in the filter menu, go to blur and Gaussian and then just by sliding it a little bit, you can make it look a little bit more antique if you wanted to or make it look a little bit more realistic. So after that, the sky's the limit and there you have it. So you've now created your own little Flash Gordon style poster um, utilizing vector masking. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Apologies it's a bit on the fast side, but I've only got 10 minutes um, and I hope you um, get to doing similar sort of things. So remember, you can get this file from pcteach.me.